Hi, I'm Carol Reeb, and this is Doc on Monterey Bay. In the evenings from late spring and throughout the fall, you may notice a gathering of lights on Monterey Bay. These are the boats of a historic fishing fleet. Local captains navigate the fishing grounds used by their fathers and their father's father more than a century ago. They come with a trust in nature, energized with high expectations, and hoping that this year will be a good year for squid. After spending six to nine months offshore, adult market squid return to shallow coastal waters in vast numbers to reproduce. After mating, females seek out sandy habitat where they attach their white egg capsules, each containing 200 tiny embryos. The eggs incubate on the seafloor until they hatch, usually within five to seven weeks. After spawning, the adults die. This video shows egg clusters not far from Fisherman's Wharf in Monterey Bay. A recent study found 95% of squid egg nurseries occur on sand, thus sandy seafloor provides critical habitat for the species. Market squid are highly perishable. They must be offloaded daily for processing so boats don't stray far from harbors. In Monterey Bay, fishing grounds lie between Marina and Pacific Grove within two miles of shore. Now let's consider the value of squid to the ocean. To a marine biologist, Dorytuthus opalescens, as scientists like to call them, help build the foundation of an ocean food chain. Squid are eaten by many types of fish. Marine mammals and shorebirds depend on them too. In other words, market squid are highly valuable to California's diverse community of sea life. They are also in the diet of a number of species protected by federal and state laws, species like whales and salmon. Without squid, even steelhead trout may go hungry. Squid fishing began on Monterey Bay 150 years ago. Today, most of the catch comes from Southern California. Market squid are in high demand around the world, and California's fishery is one of the biggest suppliers. This graph tracks a tenfold increase in catch since 1970. The graph also shows that squid catch can sometimes drop dramatically. These bad years correspond to strong El Nino events when water temperatures warm, coastal upwelling is suppressed, and the ocean becomes less productive. La Nina episodes create the good years for fishermen. Stronger upwelling brings cooler waters and the population rebounds quickly. Thus, market squid abundance fluctuates with changes in ocean conditions. However, in 2001, statewide catch dropped sharply and did not recover for several years. Many feared the species was facing a perfect storm of poor ocean conditions and overfishing. Then, in 2010, squid made a remarkable and unexpected recovery. Anthony Rousseau is a fourth-generation Italian fisherman from Monterey. After 40 years on the water, he shares his perspective on predicting squid abundance in California. And you start the season and you go every day, and then they'll come or they won't. You, there's no prediction. We see signs sometimes, a lot of baby squid, but we've seen them and then nothing showed up. It's just like, they're there. I mean, we, we, we've traveled areas and went right over them and there's nothing. Come back two hours later or a day later, there's all you want. You know I mean? They're, so it's just a hard thing. And I think that's what the problem is. Nobody really knows squid. Squid spend much of their life offshore. Unlike tunas or whales, they are small and difficult to track and monitor. For a seafood species in such high demand around the world, there is a lot even scientists do not know about squid. So when squid disappeared in Monterey Bay, many were worried. This graph shows the fishery's steep decline starting in 2003 and its impressive recovery in 2010. Mr. Rousseau remembers. I'll tell you, not that I'm any scientist or I'm any smart anybody, but we knew they were going to come back. It wasn't something that we thought that they were gone forever. And, but it did get a little concern after it got into the sec third year. We thought, well, man, it's never been this long. But then when they showed up, they showed up everywhere, just like we thought. When market squid declined, both scientists and fishermen noticed sardines were more abundant in offshore trawls. Sardines prefer warmer water, and this was a clue for what had happened. The ocean had warmed. By 2010, coastal upwelling increased, temperatures cooled, and the squid were back. 
For now, the variability of squid abundance in the ocean remains a mystery. Fortunately, squid economics is much easier to follow. Cal State Monterey Bay student Brady Latham sets out to explore the value of squid in our local markets. Squid are valuable to fishermen and their families. They are also valuable as bait and seafood. Here we show the price per pound as it moves from the boat to a Salinas processor, then sold for various uses. The greatest value is seen in restaurants. Local Moss Landing restaurant owner Phil DiGirolamo said it best. Oh, yeah, the demand of squid is incredible. When I was a kid growing up, the Sicilians and, and the Japanese were the only ones who were eating squid. The rest of everybody was using it for bait, fishing with it. I asked Mr. DiGirolamo if squid were unavailable, how would this impact his business? I'd have to go outsource it as much as I can. Now, I've got all these people that want to eat the squid, but they're really, they're really particular, and it's the craziest thing. At one point, a couple of years back, I couldn't get any local squid. We ran out. And then I got in some a nice squid from um, Japan. They did a nice job of processing and, and cleaning. And believe it or not, some of the discriminating customers, they knew the difference. <laughs> I'm in it. I do it every day. And I'm sharp enough to know. And I can, I can tell the difference with me because of my taste and all that. But I was surprised on the plate and serving it. People say, it's good, but it's not Monterey squid. Was that a lot more expensive for you to outsource? Um, a little bit more. A little bit a more? Little bit more. Okay. Yeah. And you would do that again if the population dropped? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Because it's on the menu and people expect it. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want. So you, you would not take it off the menu? You just No, I would not. But I would, yeah, I would tell them that we're not getting Monterey squid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I then asked Mr. Russo if the California squid fishery disappeared, what would that mean for his business? And one thing about fishing too is there's always the good and the bad. The squid are gone where nobody could catch them. I'd probably maybe last a season or two and then be out of business. You know? The abundance of squid can influence their price in the market. This graph compares squid catch in blue to dockside prices in red since 1990. When squid are abundant, fishermen get lower prices for their catch. When there is scarcity, prices increase. But here's the interesting thing. Squid have consistently increased in value with an average annual growth rate of 1.2%, despite good years and bad. Now let's consider the local economy. It starts with a boat and a crew. First, you need permits, you need mechanics and insurance. Fuel can cost $16,000 per month. Expenses can reach half a million dollars every year. Fishermen sell their catch to local processors who quickly clean, package, and freeze it before it spoils. 20% of California's catch ends up as bait. Local buyers include recreational fishermen and the Monterey Bay Aquarium. About 80% of the catch is sold for human consumption. Most of that is exported to Asia at a three-fold markup from dockside prices. Seafood markets create squid's greatest financial returns. A pound of squid provides two to three entrees and is worth $30 per pound, which hungry tourists are willing to pay. And tourism is a $2 billion a year industry in Monterey County, generating thousands of jobs for people. These diverse groups of people are linked together in a chain by California's market squid. Thanks, Brady. Here are some scenes highlighting the value of squid around Monterey Bay. Nature gave market squid a resilience to bounce back, even after years of population decline. As a result, we know they can tolerate a fair amount of fishing pressure. But it's not just people who depend on squid. Mr. Rousseau explains. They have to reproduce because they got to feed all the animals in the ocean. They're not just like a, a salmon or a big tuna or a, a, a swordfish, where they're at the top of the chain. 
these here have to feed everything up to that big fish to get that big. And I think Mother Nature's just made them that way, you know what I mean? Uh, where do they come from? Why there's just always so much? I don't know. Market squid are one of California's most valuable fisheries. They create a lot of black ink for food chains and market chains alike. So this summer, should you see lights in the evening reflecting off the waters of Monterey Bay, know this, the squid are back, and the high expectations we place on Mother Nature will pay off again, at least for another year. Because I'm a fisherman, I won't eat farm fish. That's just the way I am. Um, I'm hungry, I'll eat it. Farm salad? <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're hungry. Yeah, I know, but I'll get over to something else if I'm there. <laughs> Someone me... brings you a piece of fish, and you sat it down, and you were hungry, you're going to eat it. If, I, yeah, if they brought it to me. But, I mean, but the <laughs> trouble know, is, I'm going to ask her. If they brought salmon, I'm going to say, is this fresh or farm? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, well, you could probably tell by the That's taste. That's all there is, Mr. Russo. Mm -hmm.